Hey there guys, this is WannaBindi here coming with the first uh, video on remaking uh, Vampire, I almost said Hotline Miami, but this is actually remaking Vampire Survivors, my bad, I was just uh, in some other space and time as it seems. So we are going to do uh, and jump into the game and then just analyze it from the perspective of the game designer. So here. This is not uh, the coding part, so the first one, which you're seeing right in front of you, it's just basically just jumping into, well, the game designer and just checking for functionalities, core mechanics, systems, which are in place. And then we just go, go through most of them and then just say, okay, what do we need to create our first prototype? And for example, in my point, uh, for, for my series, just basically the core systems, which are fundamental, which I'm going to focus on. I want to make this video series uh, shorter and more snappy. So therefore less systems, more impactful stuff and the rest, you can just uh, use that um, and expand it to your liking. So once again, we will, we will just create a few videos and then um, we are pretty much done in this regard. So the first thing which you see in front of you, tons of things on so GUI, you got some money, you got some buttons. We are not going to do that. So once again, here, then we have a champ selection, completely kicking that out too, because we're just going to focus on the gameplay loop itself. This is just um, uh, what stuff around it, which you can do. Uh, not going to focus on that. And then on the left side, which is kind of a thing, if you want to expand it, then this is the right way to do it. You got tons of values for walk speed, health and so on. But these things are external and then they're getting loaded in. And then, for example, just multiplied it and added and, and swapped and changed and adapted for each character. Not going to do that in the video series. Our uh, values will be very fixed. So, for example, the weapons will be maybe having a little bit more of damage, but that is pretty much it. Of course, here uh, more things to do, but let's make this video series very, very understandable and easy to adapt. So, therefore, nothing of that stuff is in the game. So, here, completely kick that out. And this will be fixed for most of that. And then, of course, you got um, what else? Do, what else do we have? Uh, selection for the level completely kicking that out because we don't need it and now we are in the game and then for example the first thing and hopefully you see that uh, too is the red dude in the middle it's a player so we definitely need a player and then for example we can maybe do such a shadow dash if not well i did already a video on that uh, kind of a regard so here um what do we need? Well, first of all, we need to have kind of a movement system. So basically checking keyboard inputs and then boom, we can move around. Then the next thing is, which we definitely need, is kind of a wave spawning, which is, I guess, radially around the player. And then what we do is just spawn more and more instances and they will go towards the player. So basically we need kind of a system which is outside of the enemies itself and this is kind of important to understand um, because uh, in for example for super demon survivors our own uh, spin on this uh, formula we do that with um, well co completely empty instances that they just basically have one sprite and this is it they just got a create event and they but they don't have anything which is getting updated so how can we still have a system where they are following you because here what you see they are following you going to your direction and blinking of course we can do that too but for that we need to have an external system which is kind of giving you the impression that all the instances are well moving and doing their own thing which is not true to be honest they are uh, being controlled from the outside around the player so this is one of the systems which we definitely have to do to make a pretty optimal system uh, of i don't know a few thousand instances on the screen where we are still having three to four hundred uh, frames per second so here we tested it what was that like twelve thousand instances that was quite a lot <laughs> and then it was like 40 frames per second that's just a wow see so once again if you um, can handle game maker in the right way you can um, do quite a lot of stuff on the screen and this is not killing your performance for, for example the wrong way for example for such a game would be to give every 
enemy for example and its own step event where it's updating i don't know its movement or maybe some hits detection or whatever this would be terrible this would tank the the, the performance instantly so once again this is a thing which we don't want to do in the video series then of course the next thing which is kind of important is to establish the gameplay loop and the gameplay loop just basically consists of well getting uh, just erasing those enemies and then they are dropping those uh, xp crystals which are filling up the bar on top of us so the blue bar and then once it is up then we get a level up so here is a xp system which is then for example then giving us options of uh, additional uh, weapons which we can slot so for example if you go and watch the top left side there you have your slotted any uh, not enemies your slotted weapons uh, they could be weapons so for example some are not weapons some are for example um, supportive skills i guess you can call that or just enhancing overall your base stat so here once again um, in the video series we will just focus on just some weapons so they can advance uh, a few of those systems and then uh, what we're going to do is create a dummy version of a pop-up menu where you have three buttons which are just coming in so we won't be doing i don't know uh, t printing some text on the on here i'm doing doing some icon swaps so basically we will just condense into a very very simplistic system with just i don't know a sprite so these three sprites will just pop downwards and this is basically it and then it will just be buttons for us so once again make this super super easy and accessible and then for example you can i don't know choose one of those with your mouse so the next thing which is of course important then we need kind of a a radial detection system around the player so for example once we are close to one of those bluish crystals so we don't need to walk over them then we kind of have a magnet um, attracting system then the next thing which you see for example once we're hitting an enemy with one of our weapons then we have a damage pop-up this is a thing which we're definitely going to do so basically just to iterate we have a player he can uh, spawn some weapons once he uh, obtained of those uh, more uh, enough crystals then he's just leveling up and then each time you level up um, leveling up will be a little bit more harder because you need to uh, collect more of those crystals and then you can slot one of those new things or for example upgrade existing ones i guess we'll go for three uh, to make this super easy and then um, we got basically our core almost and done of course there is more to it so basically you got some general ui for example here the xp bar i guess this one we will definitely do and then uh, for example there are other systems which are in place in this game which are handled from the outside we will do them once again from the inside so for example one of these things could be a safe system so safe system for example this game has permanent upgrades so as you can see here now uh, it's not a blue crystal it's one of those coins and for example if you pick it up then you get a coin added uh, to uh, a permanent uh, well score or basically to a permanent uh, value with, which you can later spend for permanent upgrades we are not going to do that because um, well, once again a little bit too big for such a small tutorial system then the next thing is um, there is for example if you get your level up a random chance of getting one of those things here once again we will kick this out and even though you can even further add with if you got two items then you merge them or one of them you can uh, well it says ever so basically you can um, update it or upgrade it to a super version of it so here once again uh, you can do this or for example there are some events for example this one is here where everything is uh, circling uh, around you so basically not going to do that because that's once again a little bit uh, bigger logic and how to do that so uh, not so easy from the get-go or for example what else um one thing for example which we i guess do at the very very end maybe maybe not is a performance handling so very very important to understand is that to keep such a game running at a 
uh, good speed is to have a good optimization concerning how many instances are on the screen, uh, what they can do, and for example, uh, how to clean up stuff which is around you, which for example the player doesn't see, but you got a more or less clever system which is just cleaning up on instances which are not needed or for example ones which are outside the view then you don't need to give them commands you just deactivate them or whatever so therefore this is our last video which will do and uh, ha will have this as a problem overall so if you haven't lost you on uh, well the first few videos then i guess this will be uh, the most crucial one because this is a little bit advanced but once again very very important for such a game to be running good because for example if you just leave it like this and you spawn more and more and more and more instances at some point you will just basically tank your performance which isn't good so therefore you can still do this so with our the system which i'm going to show you you can pretty much max it to some ridiculous levels but please don't do this because at some point you are melting every graphics card and every cpu in the end of course you cannot do this completely but you know what, I, what i'm getting at and of course there is another thing in the game which is for example um handing off your for example if you're getting hit so basically some hit detection maybe we're going to do this not terribly important in my opinion and then uh this is of course um, giving you the game over if you have no hp but i guess this is not the most difficult to implement and therefore um i guess this will be a system also then they are bonus chests which i haven't unlocked as it seems in this round so basically just uh, giving you additional stuff without actually having a level up so basically just leveling up those weapons which is definitely good and of course what the game is still doing is randomly generating the ground which you're standing on even though it looks very similar it is um, just spawning some things to uh, make it appear that it's more or less organic and of course here you got some collision system which we're not gonna do because um, I guess this is uh, not too terribly uh, important and second of all if you do this um, you can get into some serious uh, uh, issues concerning the performance because if you want to do collisions for everybody then this is not that easily achievable and then of course one of the last things uh, hopefully i haven't talked about this uh, also um, the damage pop-ups uh, for the numbers this will be definitely a system i already did a video on that so a link in the description below or just for a thing which will just pop up here as a recommendation and then of course handling of hit detection so basically every weapon will have a way to de detect hit and for example if you hit something then you change uh, as you can see uh, the the sprite of the enemies which are now blinking or for example if you destroy them then they have a uh, destroy thing so once again these things will be very very easy to implement therefore part of that so once again what we're not going to do is the start screen permanent upgrades uh, the well the upgrade level tree and then a level selection and a collision and once again most of these stuff uh, things which are ui related so basically just showing our slots and so on therefore this is uh, not part of the game don't want to make it too complicated therefore really 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 the core stuff so let's jump into another game and this one is called zombie survivors it has some interesting aspects concerning how to do the same thing and here you got kind of a permanent upgrade system for the core values here it's a little bit more easy to understand and then for example you got two start weapons and for example you started mine is already uh, pretty overpowered or whatever and then basically what you do is as you can see very very similar you just um, well destroy a few enemies and then you can have upgrades and here they do it a little bit different because on the left side you have uh, six slots for weapons and six slots for um, support uh, well how could you call it for support um, uh, skills or for example uh, things which are not attacking but um, 
um, enabling or changing how the dynamics are of your regular weapons or for example you just have for example this one is just for the pickup range which is just increasing and this one is just giving you a um, healing bonus or whatever and then for example this one is actually changing uh, all of your projectiles how fast they are being spawned here the change is a little bit uh, interesting because uh, let's say um, you have uh, for example a skill and that skill can actually be maxed for infinity so there is no capping of level 9 for each weapon and there are no combinable super weapons like you see in vampire survivors this is of course then a different approach but it's actually not a bad one and for example if you are uh, for example unhappy with a skill or you just found a better one and you don't have space because you just slotted it and in case of an upgrade you can actually for example here i can get rid of that which is pretty sweet so once again there are a lot of ways how to modify how you want to play that so this is pretty good in my opinion it hasn't it doesn't have the best reviews which is kind of interesting uh, it's still a solid game which is doing a lot of things pretty good so once again this could be an alternative and this one is a little bit different but of course it is handling uh, wave spawning uh, well kind of different in this kind of regard which is of course a twist which is definitely not a bad thing and for example here we got one of those supply crates and as you can see with those things ah yeah this is way too similar to vampire survivors but of course um, you're getting uh, upgrades here and then of course they are a little bit less impactful so vampire survivors if you just upgrade it once it's kind of significant but here it is not that significant but of course uh, this hum is different because um, it's it's kind of how can i say it it is um, having and making the game a little bit more stretched in this kind of regard so here um, the the gameplay can be stretched into a longer 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 time because now you can go for infinity and therefore um, this of course then benefits how you play it and then for example the strategy is a little bit different for example um, for for runs on vampire survivors you just go for a specific builds and here you can um, have an easier approach to builds because well you can do uh, how can I say it make it a little bit easier uh, for first-timers but of course this is then how you want to do it for example here uh, this is a pretty easy build from my side I just picked uh, well, the ray gun which is kind of unfair so this is not a melee build this is just being <laughs> a sniper build or whatever you want to call that and it's working pretty decent so once again another way how to handle the vampire survivors uh, um, build and for example the call loop so once again hopefully that wasn't too drawn out yeah this is definitely a long video so a lot of rambling but for example this is one thing which is kind of interesting so here um, now the boss is being spawned so here this one is a little bit more difficult because his bullets hit like trucks so i have to yeah I have to be careful about that and he can tank quite a lot so um, and this game does a few things which are kind of interesting in my opinion uh, which spice up the whole game and here collision system and crowding is working pretty decent so basically um, game is definitely interesting so, but of course it's it has some limits so for example here this is where the level ends so the levels are pretty small and you just circle strafe um, around enemies to well, get rid of them so once again pretty good game actual coding part of remaking hotline <laughs> once again it's not hotline <laughs> remaking vampire survivors in game maker studio have a good one one up indie